Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is now Monday, June 15th, 2020, and for the most part, it has been a pretty miserable Monday around here in southeast North Carolina. The sun's trying to come out now off to my left out my office window, but man, we've had a lot of rainfall that's cut off low. I'll show you that in just a moment. Just miserable weather here, unless you like rain. It's, it's the kind of rain that just makes you want to stay in bed and not get up and do anything but we can't do that at least I can't I got a lot to do and this is part of that so let's jump right in and I'll show you what's going on here's a nice infrared satellite still image from the University of Wisconsin pretty good tap of moisture all the way from the Caribbean up into this cutoff low over the southeast and mid-Atlantic states this is going to be stuck for the next several days unfortunately and that will mean more rain and occasional thunderstorms and rough surf at the beach. Um, this is the upper level lows up here in the mid-levels. Then you have high pressure out here at the surface. And that high pressure, <coughs> excuse me, is pumping the winds off the ocean at a pretty brisk clip. I took the kids out to Wrightsville Beach yesterday and it was just miserable. Felt like it was late October and it's mid-June. Anyway, the bottom line, yes, there's some disturbed weather out here, but... The atmosphere is not in a situation where anything can develop. There's just too much in the way of sinking motion. There's also quite a bit of dust that has been ejected out into the Atlantic here off the coast of Africa, and that will persist for the next several days. We're just not in a pattern where anything has a chance to develop. We do have these pretty strong tropical waves that are coming off from time to time, and they are fairly robust, but they're fighting against climatology for now. Uh, eventually, though, I think that the balance will be tipped in favor of development, and I'll show you when I think that might happen. But for at least this week, things look pretty quiet. If we examine things from a vorticity perspective, try to look at the areas of energy. Uh, here's that upper level energy, mid to upper level energy over parts of the southeast, and that's going to hang around for a few days, unfortunately. It's just the way it goes. Down here in the tropics, you can see these pieces of energy that are coming across. Maybe a weak one in there, another one there. Uh, these tropical waves moving on by, innocuous, no big deal right now. But I think once we get into early July, we may see things start to change. And I'll show you why I believe that in just a minute. The look, the weekly look at the sea surface temperature anomalies. Uh, La Nina still coming on. It's developing in the Pacific. Uh, pretty solid here, this anomaly. I mean, this is about as obvious as you can get. This blue ribbon stretching out. And I'm going to find, I think I'm going to get Michael Lowry. I'm going to invite him. If you know uh, Michael Lowry, he used to be at the Weather Channel. Uh, I'm going to ask him to come on and uh, do a little special Hurricane U and explain what these little ribbons are, these waves, these transverse oceanic waves, why we have them. What do they mean? And these are pretty high amplitude this time. You know, sometimes we see them and they're kind of small. I mean, look here, even in the equatorial area south of the coast of Africa, uh, there's kind of a La Nina developing there, some cold subsurface water starting to make itself known, and just a few of those little peaks there. Fascinating. So let's turn to the experts, and we'll get, uh, I'll ask Michael Lowry to come on and see what he can uh, offer. Uh, stay tuned. I'll let you know when we're going to do that. Otherwise, the Atlantic, very warm compared to average, about a half a degree Celsius overall. Gulf of Mexico, it ebbs and flows pretty easily depending on the wind shifts and so forth. Northern Gulf, running just a little bit below the long-term average, but make no mistake, it's still above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, warm enough for hurricanes to develop. We just don't have any positive anomalies uh, overwhelming the Gulf right now, which is a good thing. So this is neat. This is a, um, and just, look, it's just starting over, a 90-day animation. Um, we had somebody suggest that I do this. I wanted to show you. So thank you for that comment and suggestion. Look at this since March, April, and May. Uh, the same area we were just looking at. It's, it's this map, but it's animated. So we start over March 17th. You notice out here in the Pacific, we lose all that heat out there. It looked like it was going to try to make a surge back, and then all of a sudden, bam, the uh, negative anomalies showed up. And at the same time frame, from about mid-March on, 
the Atlantic, especially focused down here in the tropics, really started to warm and we cooled it off in the subtropics as you can see there. So the energy, the upward motion and the heat focus now down in the deep tropics and again this we've been talking about this no surprise this pattern here let's get rid of that this pattern here going to favor a very active season for the Atlantic Basin almost no doubt about it we're gonna have the numbers out there I'm certain of that now where they end up whatever does form I have no idea you know but Ben Knoll is uh, tweeting today that uh, the hurricane season update from the ECMWF and the UK Met, the super blend, and he made this map based on that data. Uh, really helpful. Maybe these models are showing us through the precipitation anomaly, which is this green, uh, which is more precip than normal, in some cases more than two inches above normal. Maybe this was showing us where the tracks will be. Possibly some Caribbean cruisers as they call it, maybe another track up here off the coast, possibly something over here in the southeast and then up in the northeast gulf, maybe some systems come out this way. Maybe, this will be really interesting to see as we compare this and I'm going to save this graphic in the old archives and see when all is said and done if, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if this has, I ate some uh, pretzels earlier, still have some I should have drunk some water um, no I'm not getting sick I feel great but anyway the uh, precip the pre ugh, the precip anomaly let me just get me back on so I can focus there we are see I'm fine the precipitation anomaly is maybe showing us the way so to speak so I want to go back when the hurricane season is over we look at the tracks of what we had and we can compare it to this and see if this kind of guidance is in fact useful or was it just complete hogwash we'll see remember this is not some map that is drawn um, through uh, subjectivity you know where someone says I think this is what's gonna happen this is based on computer model data and so it's very objective it's just it's just using raw numeric output from the models here the ensemble forecast showing what the precipitation anomaly is forecast to be from the ECMWF and the UK Met through the next several months. And you see that swath there, the darker green. Very interesting. So we'll see if this has any merit. Uh, again, that is being saved, and we will revisit this in November. All right, so mark it down. Watch Mark's discussion in November and see how this worked out. There you go. Uh, so when will things start to pick up to where maybe this map starts to bear some fruit so to speak well Eric Webb tweeting just a few days ago that the EPS which is the uh, ensemble prediction system consistently hinting at a massive uptick in East Pacific and West Atlantic convection near the end of June this may result in a burst of Northeast Pacific tropical cyclones and perhaps a more favorable subseasonal state for tropical cyclogenesis in the Atlantic by early July so what the heck are we looking at all right so let me try to help you understand this real quick um, so in this particular graphic the green areas and sort of the I don't know what you call that almost teal basically green if it's not brown or rust colored or orange green is upward motion in the atmosphere or the models way of signifying divergence in the atmosphere where the air is spreading out instead of sinking and coming together convergence and so what we're looking at is uh, let's get rid of me this is the time right here so this is where we are now 13th of June well we're here Eric tweeted this on the 12th so time goes this way out into the future and so the end of this is the 27th of June you understand so you move all this up if you could like put it on a wheel and scroll it so to speak you would scroll through time this is where we are in the present all right and this is where the model thinks we're headed or the ensemble prediction which is models plural all the different ensemble packages uh, or ensemble runs from the euro uh, in this situation uh, the ensemble mean so this is the average is a good way to look at it so going out into the future um, we'll say by the 21st of June here 
uh, the modeling indicating in this area through here, if we can look at it, right here, this is the tropics, this is the swath, start to really get amplified into this green. And that means more upward motion. So basically, by about June 21st, this section all through here should start to see upward motion lasting from the 21st at least until the end of the month and probably longer. It'll be interesting to see when the weeklies come out uh, this week and what they show. I'll ask Eric or Ben to send those my way if they don't mind. And in fact, look at that little island there of more excessive upward motion. And if you extrapolate that to longitude, that's right there in the Western Atlantic and the Caribbean. Bottom line, it looks like as we get into early July, that is when things might start to become more favorable in the Eastern Pacific, Northeast Pacific, and uh, perhaps the Western portions of the Atlantic Basin. So stay tuned. This is what I think is amazing. This sub-seasonal forecasting, we're looking out at about two weeks, and it gives us an indication that just maybe we'll start to see a window of opportunity open for development. And that'll give us an idea of when to start looking at the operational models, when those start to crank out potential development uh, in, in the modeling, the operational, the GFS, the Euro, etc. So far, we're not really seeing anything, but we wouldn't expect that until about a couple weeks. All right. So there you go. Fairly brief today, not much going on. And again, that's very, very typical of June, even in a very busy season. But once again, give it a couple of weeks and things might begin to change. That's the point of this. It's the hurricane outlook and discussion. We discuss it and make sense of it all. At least we try to. Don't forget I'm on uh, Twitter at Hurricane Track. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Everything's Hurricane Track, Hurricane T-R-A-C-K. And we are supported by our patrons. Crowdfunding at its best. Patreon.com slash Hurricane Track if you want to join that and reap the benefits, our live cameras, our podcast series, and more, all available to our folks that support us on Patreon to help this be available to everybody. We thank you. All right, that's it for me. Have a great rest of your Monday. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.